as they say in Germany. It looks like Frau Hohl is shaking out her bed sheets. This is a story that comes directly from the Brothers Grimm. It's called Mother Hole. There was once a widow who had two daughters, one of whom was pretty and industrious, while the other was ugly and idle. But she was much fonder of the ugly and idle one because she was her own daughter. And the other, who was a stepdaughter, was obliged to do all the work and be the Cinderella of the house. Every day the poor girl had to sit by a well on the roadside and spin and spin and spin until her fingers bled. Now it happened that one day the shuttle was marked with her blood, so she dipped it in the well to wash the mark off, but it dropped out of her hand and fell to the bottom. She began to weep and ran to her stepmother and told her what happened. But her stepmother scolded her and was so merciless as to say, Since you have let this fall in, you have to go get it. So the girl went back to the well, and she didn't know what to do. And in the sorrow of her heart, she decided to jump into the well. She lost her senses, and when she awoke and came to herself again, she was in a lovely meadow where the sun was shining and many thousands of flowers were growing. Along this meadow she went, and at last she came to a baker's oven full of bread. The bread was crying out to let it out. This is because it would burn otherwise. It's been in there for a really long time. So she went up to it, took out all the loaves one by one, and then went along her way. After that, she came to an apple tree, which was covered in apples. The tree called out to her to be shaken because all of the apples on the tree were ripe. So the girl did that. She shook the tree until all of the apples fell. She gathered them all into a heap, and then she went on her way. Finally, she came to a little house, out of which a old woman peeped, but she had huge scary teeth that frightened the girl and she was about to run away but the old woman called out to her and asked what she was afraid of she said to stay with her if she will do all of the work in the house properly and she would be better for it not only that but she had to take care of her bed and shake it thoroughly so that the feathers would fly and then it will snow on the earth because she is Mother Holy. As the old woman spoke so kindly to her, the girl took courage and agreed to enter her service. She attended to everything. She was really good at her job. She always shook the bed so vigorously that the feathers would fly about like snowflakes. She had a very pleasant life with the old woman and never had an angry word the woman would treat her to boiled or roast meat almost every day. She stayed with Mother Hole for a very long time, and then she became sad. She didn't really know what it was at first, but found out that it was actually homesickness. Although she was many, many times better over here with Mother Hole, she still had a longing to be home. She finally told the old woman that she did have homesickness, and even though she is better off here, she can't stay any longer, and she has to go up to her own people again. Mother Hole said she was pleased that she wanted to be home again, and that she had served her so well, and that she would actually escort her back. The old woman took her by the hand and led her to a very large door. The door was opened, and just as the girl was standing beneath the doorway, a shower of gold fell on her, and the gold stuck to her so that she was just completely covered in it. You shall have that, because you have been so industrious, said Mother Holy. And at the same time, she gave her back the shuttle, which she had let fall into the well. Thereupon, the door closed, the maiden found herself up above the earth, not far from her mother's house. As she went into the yard, the rooster was standing beside the well side and cried, Cock-a-doodle-doo! Your golden girls come back to you. The girl immediately went to her mother, and she was covered in gold. She was well received, and the girl told her all that had happened, and soon the mother 
had become very anxious to obtain the same good luck for her lazy and ugly daughter. She had to seat herself by the well and spin and spin and spin, just like the Cinderella girl did. Next, she had to stain the shuttle with her blood. So instead of doing that, she actually pricked her finger on a thorn bush, then threw the shuttle into the well and then immediately jumped right after it. She came to a beautiful meadow and walked along the very same path that the girl had illustrated to her mother and the ugly girl. When she got to the bread oven, the bread was crying again to take it out. But the lazy girl said, whatever. I don't want to get dirty. And then she went on her way. Then she approached the apple tree. The apple tree was full of ripe apples and it was asking to be shaken. The girl was like, oh yeah, whatever, and went along her way. When she came to Mother Holly's house, she wasn't afraid of her big, large teeth. She already heard about it and she offered to work for her immediately knowing what the prize was to be. So on the first day, she did okay. She worked fairly diligently. She obeyed the mother, mostly because she knew there was gold at the end of this rainbow. But on the second day, she started to get more lazy. Then the third day happened. And then the fourth day, she just didn't even get out of bed. She also did not make Mother Holy's bed as she ought to and did not shake it so the feathers would fly up and make snowflakes. Mother Holy was soon tired of this and gave her notice to leave. The girl was very willing to go and thought that now she would be showered with gold. As they both approached the great door, instead of gold, a big kettle full of pitch was emptied over her. Mother Holy says, this is the reward for your service and shuts the door on her. The lazy girl goes home, but she was covered with pitch and the rooster said, your pitchy girls come back home to you, cock a doodle doo. But the pitch stuck fast to her, and she could not get the pitch off as long as she lived. This myth collected by the Brothers Grimm is kind of similar to a lot of myths that we have seen in Grimm fairy tales or just fairy tales in general. But one thing that's interesting about it is Frau Holle is actually a figure, a mighty figure, who is more like a weather deity. She creates snow. That's pretty awesome. You can probably surmise that this myth, it might be a fairy tale, but is also associated with an even larger myth that goes into more like gods and goddesses. And it predates Christian mythology and even predates Norse mythology. This year, during the winter season, I wanted to end the year with our grim fairy tale of Frau Hull. Now next year though, we are going to expand her mythology, so you'll have to wait a whole year for it, but we're going to be talking about Frau Hull, also known as Hulda, or Pershta, or Hull, or all of these other names. Some have even called her the female version of Krampus. Happy winter season, and most of all, happy new year. If you do like videos like this, make sure to keep watching. You can subscribe and follow and comment down below. Let me know what myths you're looking forward to next year. And I guess that's when I'll be seeing you next.